Dr. Romani recommends the deep technique for dealing with narcissists do not defend, engage, explain, or personalize. We've talked about do not engage. We've talked about do not explain. It's time to talk about do not defend, which means it's time to talk about the workplace bullying ambush. One of my faves, the good old midnight special, the October surprise. Workplace bullies love to ambush you. It is their version of Pearl Harbor. It's a sting operation. It's the workplace TED offensive, and it's gonna come in the form of a verbal or written warning or a bad review. I've experienced quite a few of these in my 30-year career. And it's not one-on-one. -on -one. Again, workplace bullies never act alone because they can't, they are too weak. The term mobbing just needs to be retired once and for all because all workplace bullying is mobbing. Workplace bullying is collusion. Workplace bullies always gangbang. Narcissistic bosses always have at least one, sometimes more, nasty, sniveling little minion or flying monkey to do their dirty work for them and the assault may even be physical. I have been literally physically pinned into a corner of a room by my attacker's bodies to make sure that I was unable to escape while they berated me. Workplace bullies wanna make sure that you do not have the chance to prepare to defend yourself. So you don't. Repeat after me, never defend. Because I've been through it multiple times, I know how terrifying the workplace bullying ambush can feel, and that's by design. It is deliberately intended to trigger your worst survival programs and force you to engage by defending yourself. I know when you are called on the carpet for a verbal or written warning, it seems as though you are being fired. And it's tempting to launch into defensiveness just like a drowning victim scrambling desperately for anything to survive. When people are bullying us, it's natural to start course correcting. We've all done it. Don't beat yourself up about it. But that is actually not the intent. When workplace bullies ambush you, they are not firing you. Not yet. They still need you around for supply. They're actually not trying to get rid of you. They're trying to get their nut. They just want to see you squirm. These people get off on pain and suffering. Some of them probably literally masturbate to it. The workplace bullying ambush is not necessarily a firing, it's a punishment. You are being put in your place, taught a lesson, knocked off your pedestal and taken down a notch or two. What did you do that was so bad? Again, at some point you may not even remember, you probably put up a boundary with them. Remember, a boundary is the word no, and a boundary can be only energetic. Workplace bullies absolutely do not tolerate boundaries. They are psychological rapists who refuse to take no for an answer. They are spoiled, entitled, three-year-old toddlers who want what they want when they want it, and they misinterpret boundaries as a rejection of the entire self, which activates their toxic shame and their rage. When you put up boundaries with workplace bullies, I guarantee you they will retaliate every single time. And what better way to do it than by ambushing you? The workplace bullying ambush has the same intent as all workplace bullying to provoke you, get a rise out of you, get under your skin, push your buttons and release emotional energy for narcissistic vampires to feed off of like hogs at a trough snorting lines of coke. It is to force you to engage with them on their level, which is the level of ego, and it is a very low level indeed. This is narcissistic baiting. You really need to understand something. Narcissism is an antagonistic personality style. These people love to fight. They love it. They thrive on conflict and drama. They live for it. They eat that shit up. Some of them want to get physically violent with you because that's the only way they can dominate you. They pick fights 
just for the heck of it. They're like fire signs. Fire signs, I'm sorry, but you are like this. Fire signs, fight pick. If you are a target of workplace bullying, you're probably a lover, not a fighter. You follow the way of the peaceful warrior. If you are a peaceful person and conflict averse, they think you're boring. That's what they think of you. You're a big old snooze fest yawn. If you get into an argument with these people, they will feign faux outrage, but secretly they enjoy it. Some of them look like they're literally having an orgasm. And the actual content of the argument is completely irrelevant. Melanie Tanya Evans says, narcissists do not care if you are arguing about two flies crawling up a wall. They don't care if you're speaking Norwegian or Swahili. It doesn't matter. They just want the fight. They just want the conflict. They want you to engage with them on their nasty, low level. They want you to get down and dirty with them. They want you to roll around in the mud with them. And you know what they say, never wrestle with a pig. Lie down with dogs. That's why it's so important to never ever give these people what they want. I once had a student from Thailand who was trained his whole life in Muay Thai kickboxing. In Thailand, they don't use any protective equipment and he showed me all the scars on his knuckles and his shins. Anyway, he was attending American high school at the time and he said in school, he lied. He was like, oh, I can't fight. Oh, I, I, I don't know how to fight because he knew that the minute people figured out that he knew how to fight, there would be a line of kids waiting for him in the parking lot. The minute people know that you know how to fight, they all want to fight you. If you give these people a glimpse of your passion and your fighting spirit, you just opened the cookie jar. They will never leave you alone. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to never defend yourself. No matter what they throw at you, do not course correct. I know it's hard. I never credited workplace bullies with any creativity, but when they want to, they can come up with some pretty fantastic stuff. I have been called every name in the book to my face, and I'm sure that pales in comparison to what bullies have said about me behind my back. I have been accused of racism. I have been accused of homophobia. I have been called gay, bi, and even trans myself. I don't take offense to that at all. I mean, I identify as a cishet woman, but there's nothing wrong with being LGBTQIA+. And I have been sexualized absolutely everywhere I have ever gone in my life. I have been called a slut to my face. I have been accused of hitting on Every man I have ever so much as made eye contact with, dude, if I make eye contact with you, that's not an invitation, that's a mistake. I have been accused of doing drugs when I have never been in the same room with narcotics. And I have been accused of having abortions when I've never been pregnant. Again, I don't take offense because I support women's reproductive rights. Back in 2016, when Taylor Swift was getting flamed on the internet, her bullies called her a snake because they happened to bully her on World Snake Day. I think that's so funny because her Chinese zodiac sign is the snake. Anyway, two years later, she was on tour with a giant inflatable snake named Karen on stage. And that turned out to be the highest grossing tour in American history, which will of course be eclipsed by her current tour. That's how you do it. Ask yourself, what would Taylor do? Seriously, let's think about this. What is your goal? Your only goal in life is to get these people to shut the fuck up and get the fuck out of your fucking face. Their goal, on the other hand, is to force you to engage, to move, to jump when they say jump. They just want to see you do something or say something in response to their bullying so they know they have power and control over you. When workplace bullies ambush you, they are expecting you to defend yourself to try to prove them wrong. 
If you disagree with them, you are giving them exactly what they want. You are initiating a conflict and releasing emotional energy for them to feed off of as a source of supply, and they will keep that argument going all night. They are not expecting you to agree with them. It's like Taylor's snake. No matter what they throw at you, just own it. What that does is it shuts down the whole conversation so it can't go anywhere. They don't know how to respond to that. You're so angry. I'm so angry. You're a bitch. I'm such a bitch. How many people have you slept with? Oh, hundreds. You gotta be in the triple digits before you a ho fo show. How many STDs do you have? Oh, all of them. I have all of them. How many abortions have you had? Oh, I try to get one at least once a year. It's like going to the spa. If they accuse you of doing something illegal, you talk only to your attorney. If you try to defend yourself, what's gonna happen? It will all fall on deaf ears in one ear and out the other. They're just gonna move the goalposts and start contradicting themselves with their usual stunning hypocrisy. It's what Dr. Romani calls narcissism math. Everything you do is wrong. Nothing you do is right. What is the mantra of narcissistic abuse? Three words. You can't win. So why would you even try? If I listened to all the conflicting feedback I've gotten over the last 30 years, my eyebrows are too thick and too thin at the same time, my hair is really unhealthy and beautiful at the same time, my hands are beautiful and too big at the same time, my legs are long but not that long at the same time, my chest is flat and my ass is too big at the same time, I'm too thin and I need to tone up a bit at the same time, I'm overdressed but I need a little polishing at the same time, I'm slow and fast at the same time, I'm really good to talk to and really difficult to talk to at the same time, I'm mean but very nice at the same time, I'm mean-spirited but so sweet at the same time, I'm rude but too polite at the same time, I'm angry but so calm at the same time, everything I do is for attention but I'm quiet and reserved at the same time, I'm a slut but cold, serious, and uptight at the same time. I'm so full of myself, but too hard on myself at the same time. I'm all about me, but you can't stop staring at me. And I'm a dark negative person who's unhappy, but every single time I have ever been genuinely happy in my life, suddenly I'm too much arrogant, stuck up, a snob who thinks she's better than everybody else, coming on too strong, like a ton of bricks, intimidating everyone, and sucking all the oxygen out of the room. And all of that feedback was coming from the same people. You can't fit that much cognitive dissonance inside Donald Trump's weave. Folks, that stuff is crazy making. That's some crazy making stuff right there. No wonder I'm crazy. When you twist and turn and contort yourself into a pretzel to try to meet the unrealistic expectations of hypocritical narcissists, that is the surest route to madness. You drive yourself insane. You also make yourself sick, sometimes literally. I would know. I used to course correct. When I lived in Moscow in my early 20s, Several narcissists criticized my weight, so I came home with eating disorders, went for three years without getting my period, and ended up in the hospital for six weeks at 109 pounds. That would be an over course correction. I had to learn the hard way by almost losing my life to never, ever let anyone control me again. I'm not saying it's easy. I get it. It hurts to be judged unfairly, to be wrongly accused. So let's try a little exercise. I have an air sun and a water moon, so I like to apply logic to my emotions. Instead of actually feeling my feelings, I try to analyze my way out of them. I am aware that doesn't actually work, and I'm a Libra rising, so I'm fair and balanced like Fox News. So let's be fair. You don't have a good opinion of them. You don't like it when they judge you, but you're judging them too. You've called them narcissists and bullies. You think they're sick, disgusting, 
revolting. I'm a borderline. No one demonizes better than I do. When people judge me, I judge them right back. In fact, I judge them so severely, I don't consider them human beings at all. In my mind, they are completely dehumanized. Okay, bitch, right back at you, bitch. You don't like me, I don't like you either. You don't respect me, I don't respect you either. So we agree on something. Fair enough. Is it fair to care about the opinions of people that you do not have a good opinion of? Is it fair to care about being judged by people that you are judging at the same time? Just to back off the judgment for a sec, not that I advocate for compassion, I extend as much compassion to my bullies as they extended to me. Instead of compassion, let's just try understanding. People with low empathy who are insecure and stupid cannot understand anyone who is different from them. And nature abhors a vacuum. It's fear of the unknown. They have a void to fill and they're going to fill it with whatever they need you to be for them. They have to pigeonhole you into a box that makes sense for their diseased little pea brains. So this is where do not personalize comes in. These days it's fashionable for people to say that they don't take anything personally. People actually say that. Saying you don't take anything personally is about as cliche as saying you are politically moderate. Like what does that even mean? Guess what? Some things really are personal. Workplace bullying is about as personal as it gets. They don't treat everyone like this. It's called the target for a reason. You are being targeted. But sometimes it's not personal. This time it really is all about them. It's a story that people need to tell themselves about you to make themselves feel better, to medicate whatever weird emotion they feel in your physical presence alone that they can't understand because they don't have any self-awareness. Whatever they need. For example, I am accused of promiscuity because I'm an attractive woman who lives alone. The assumption is that if you can have sex with anyone you want, even if you have zero interest, you automatically do because that's what they would do. It's a projection. When I get the gay trans thing, it's almost always coming from an insecure, immature incel who knows that I'm not attracted to him. He doesn't feel very good about himself and needs to put me into a box to make himself feel better about his inferiority complex. Now, when I get the buy thing, I'm not really sure where that one comes from unless it's wishful thinking, they want to thruple, I don't know. When I get the drugs thing, it's because I'm thin. I come from one of the fattest cities and one of the fattest countries in the world and people who accuse me of doing drugs are always heavier than I am and they can't figure out how to be thin without drugs. I used to hate the expression that which does not kill us makes us stronger because I think it's an excuse for martyrdom, a persecution complex, and victim consciousness. But the truth is we are all learning to be really mentally strong here. There is no greater waste of time in life than caring about what other people think of you. There is no greater strength in life than never, ever caring about what anyone thinks of you. It may get to the point that you hear so much ridiculous crap that you're numb. It may get to the point that you find it downright amusing. It's like being a member of a protected class. Granted, some things really are not funny, but if you are a member of a protected class, you hear the same things over and over and over again so many times that at a certain point, you just have to laugh at the lack of originality. Every week on my local public radio station, I have to listen to a man call in to complain that all women are bad drivers because we're always doing our makeup. That's it. I'm dead inside. Workplace bullies are having their fun with us all the time. We might as well get to have our fun too. It's only fair. 
The reason I say do not engage is that engagement is currency. These people do not deserve your energy. They do not deserve you. They do not even deserve the truth. Maybe I'm not as good a person as I like to think I am because I have absolutely no problem lying to people who are lying to me. They're going to tell themselves whatever they want anyway. The next time you are in a toxic environment and workplace bullies subject you to the rapid fire series of 20 questions about your personal life, give everyone a different answer. Tell one person you're married, tell another person you're divorced, tell another person you're single, tell another person you have a significant other, tell another person you're gay, tell them you're a vegetarian, and then sit down and eat a big hamburger right in front of them. What you wanna do is you wanna create one big mind F in the workplace so that when they all get together to gossip about you, their heads explode. And they can't say anything to you about it because they would have to admit that they were gossiping about you. Oh, and one more thing. When you get called on the carpet, if you have time, try to drink a big Coke or something right before it so you can burp your way through it. Just to let them know what you really think of them. I hope that helps. Take care.